So can I can I just you are yes book. yes give me a a new page just to give new me page. a new page new page new, new, very new very new yes. Yes. yes I wish I could be there here give me the pen yes so now I'll ask you Janai what are you seeing <laughs> seeing a dot you see I'm seeing a dot yes I know that's actually what many people see in management. They see a dot. They see that dot. Look, the dot is very, very small. <laughs> the dot is very, very small. Can but you see that? Yeah, yeah, but John saw the dot. He did not see the big <laughs> white <laughs> surface. <laughs> and, and that's... <laughs> that is so accurate. Yeah, yeah I did not see the. Uh, did actually, not I didn't see the page. Yes, I, I just saw the the dot. And actually, that is what many people focus on. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm very excited that I'm having Patrick Ndeda. Uh, I'm gonna let Patrick introduce himself. Now, please forgive me if I'm gonna be laughing a lot. <laughs> it's because Patrick is really, 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 really funny, <laughs> and I just can't help myself. We laugh, we joke, we sing What a beautiful day Not a cloud in our sight so, so Patrick, welcome to our show. <laughs> Thank you, Jante. But, uh, hi, everyone. I didn't come with any laughing gas. So, <laughs> yeah, my name is Patrick Ndeda, just like you have said. Eh? Yes, yes. And uh, Ndeda in my community means the loved one. I happen to be a lovely person where I come from. And I know you love me too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm yes. happy to be with you. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm going to participate in this. Yes. Uh, I don't know how much content you would want to get from my introduction. Yes. Um, family wise? Well, uh, it's your choice. Professionally? Professionally would be great. Socially? Socially, professionally, spiritually, spiritually, <clears throat> all that would be great. Okay, so yes. let me start with the professionally. Yes. I, I, I don't know where I belong professionally because I'm a jack of all trades. Okay. Yes. Um. Growing up, uh, I I didn't know what I wanted to become. You know those questions like you know parents ask their children when you grow up. What yes. Do you want to be? Yes. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Um, at times I'll go to the hospitals and I'm like, I want to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the airport or airstrip was far away from our place. But at times we would see some you know, small aeroplanes uh, spraying uh, where I come from. It's an agricultural uh, you know, place. So they would spray the wheat. Yes. And when they're going to uh, well, at the airstrip, we will run. So at times, I'm like, I want to become a pilot. There's a time I took my father to the bank, and I, you know, I loved the way the bankers, uh, you know, were looking like, and I thought they had all the monies. I want yes. to become a banker. Yes. So, in, to cut the long story short, I didn't know what I wanted to become. Yeah. So I pursued several courses. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. I started off by doing a course known as banking. <clears throat> and that was uh, because of uh, the interest of my father. Mm -hmm. I did a uh, medical uh, laboratory technology. I did applied biology. I did uh, counseling psychology. Mm -hmm. I did uh, sociology. Now, uh, <clears throat> so basically, I, I have mastered in, uh, in arts. Okay. But when I did medical laboratory technology, I dropped it. I have the certificates, but uh, I don't use them. Okay. So I have. Uh, and I, all these, and all these was in the pursuit of what, like try, try, trying to find. Trying to find myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Look, even at master's level, yes. I have a master's in medical uh, medical sociology. I I have a master's in uh, in. Uh, in project management, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, still, I feel like I have not fought myself. 
So that's the reason as why it's a bit difficult for me to to actually place myself yes, somewhere. Like narrow it down and say yeah. this is this yeah. is. This but but the beauty is I have several tools. So wow. uh, I, uh, yeah. So when uh, they are calling for medical laboratory te- technologists, I'll go there. When they are calling for you know someone to work in a botanical uh, laboratory <laughs> or uh, something to do with the zoology, yes. you yes. know, uh, prostate, I, I will be there. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. So that's something about me that you didn't know. Okay. Now you know. Now I know. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, you know, in my mind, mm. all I had was this is a this is a project management guy like he's just you know like that but all these medical things that you've just brought up mm-hmm. i didn't know about that yes, now you know. <laughs> and so in his capacity as you know he's now in art <laughs> everything <laughs> um you know i'm, I'm very excited because i just wanted to speak about something that um a lot of people you've had it capacity building and mentorship yes yes, yes. and and a lot of people sometimes confuse what that is Mm-hmm. You know, like like for example, if people are coming to train our organization, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we don't we don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted I, I wanted you to bring the light, not from the not from the not from the company training side, but from yes. the if I want to be a a person who does capacity building and yes. mentorship, yes. you know, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, some people don't go to school for it, some people go to school for it. Uh, how important is it to first of all study? Is it important first of all? It's very very important because uh, um, we are we are living in an evolving world, and every other time there are changes. You are a capacity builder yourself because you do this every other time. Oh, yes, I'm a capacity builder. Yes. How how is that? Yesterday I phoned you training someone on how to key in, uh, you know, uh, uh, to do their fingerprints. Oh. That is part of capacity building. Really? Capacity building means that you hold someone's hand and help them help them to walk, show them the way and let them walk. That is capacity building. We do this every other time. So wow. it's not a matter to that someone has to go to school to learn the aspect of capacity building. If you have a family, you do capacity building every other day. You mentor them. So mentorship, mentorship training, yeah. as you know, um, like in a, in the medical field, we call it continuous medical education. Yes. Um, all that is part of capacity building. Wow. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's my view of capacity building. Uh-huh. A company, you know, a company struggling, you know, uh, in, in producing results. Yes. And they need people to come and motivate yes. <laughs> their staff to actually yes. produce those results. Yes. Because, because in my understanding, uh, knowledge is not enough. You know, I might have a master's degree, but but my company is not performing. Mm-hmm. So capacity, capacity capacity building is coming here, mm-hmm. and finding out what's what's missing or what's what's not working in the structures that has that. Mm-hmm. You know, organization not perform with all the knowledge that they have. Mm-hmm. So and but now you're telling me that that's that's not just it. There's, there's way there more. There is than more. That. There is more. Even what you're talking about yes. the gap analysis. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Gap okay. analysis. It's called a gap analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it's gap analysis. <laughs> the gap analysis is yes. also, you know, um, part of capacity building mm-hmm. because we have a lot. We, we try to find out why is the cap, uh, the company not performing. You have all sorts of uh, personnel, yes. all qualified personnel. Yes. You have all the required resources, but uh, there is something that is missing. So you come and uh, do some sort of a gap analysis. Okay. So once you do a, or a, it's either gap analysis or needs assessment. Mm-hmm. So once you have uh, done your needs assessment, yes. now you go back on the train. You realize, ah, that company, it lacks staff motivation. Oh. They have adequate staff. They have all the resources. But what is lacking is staff motivation. So what do we do? We, we sell them the idea of a team building. We take the teams out, yeah? And once we do the team building, yeah. And I try to find out from the staff what is it that will motivate you. And then uh, we do a report to the management. Okay. So again, team building is part of capacity building. Wow. Needs assessment is yes. part of it's part of uh, capacity building. Yes. Gap analysis is part of capacity building. Wow. Okay. Yes. So there is much more to capacity building than uh, just training. Got it. Okay. Yes. I understand that. Now, so let's say I want to be a capa- 
But you've said we all capacity builders now. Yes. No, I don't even know where yes. to start. Yes. But let's say I, I really want to pursue this on a different level mm-hmm. where now I get called by different communities to go and, you know, uh, look at the gap analysis. As it's <laughs> <laughs> Do they? You have to, make, of, have to become a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the qualities really that, you know, really make someone be, you know, a really good capacity builder. Yeah. Uh, if there's any, maybe there might not be any qualities. And capacity building is again divided into different categories. Oh. And uh, maybe what you want to know is much of a, like a trainer or a community facilitator. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so um, for a trainer, um, there are quite a number of things that one is. Like, uh, for instance, what you're talking about, the needs assessment. Mm-hmm. You need to find out, right, you know, what what does the community, <clears throat> my target population, uh, my audience, you call it the audience, yes. what do they want? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, you may not, you might not take uh, rice to the Ugali eaters. In my community, we, <laughs> do we, we eat rice okay. before, before a meal. Okay. Uh, we eat rice before taking a meal. Yes, uh, where I meal here is in Ugali. Eat rice before taking a meal. Yes. <laughs> so rice is not a meal. No, no, no. Wow. That is just okay. you know, setting the pace, like an appetizer. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um, you seeing that analogy, um, you need to identify who your audience are. Uh, are you, do you want to build a capacity or to train older people? Are they young people or are they middle-aged gender generation? So for the young people, again, you have to tailor-make their training depending on the needs that a needs assessment that you might have. Mm-hmm. Let me just zero it down to something like a behavior change communication to, okay. the young, to the young people. Yes. Now, the kind of uh, information you will uh, package for these young people, mm-hmm. how you're going to convey the information is uh, different from how you want to do it to the older people. Yeah, mm. because now the older people have seen it all. Yes. They have experience. Yes. They have information. But uh, the younger people may not be having a lot of information. And so you need to package the information in a way that they will understand. So number one, yeah. needs assessment. Number two, know your audience. Number three, package the information mm-hmm. according. Um, we can call it. Um, we can, you know, it's like a packaging the content. Eh? So you have done the needs uh, assessment. You have a uh, package the information. Yeah. Now you want to communicate. Now how to communicate or how to pass the message will be different. But you know, depending on the the category, the age, their backgrounds, yeah, backgrounds in terms of uh, like culture wise. Um, at, at times I use this example when uh, training the older folks, you have to be culturally sensitive. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, like uh, for instance, you might not use a political example in a field where people are so sensitive on politics. Like, uh, um, at the moment, uh, you know, uh, there is a, you know, a, a different uh, political factions. We have uh, the pro Ruto, the pro Uru, the pro Raila. So, uh, for instance, uh, many a times I go to CIA. Yes. Uh, perhaps I will not uh, speak anything to do with the Ruto. I have to be very, very sensitive. Or else I might, you know, um, step on someone's foot okay. knowingly oh. and that that's gonna distort the whole thing isn't it so if you start with, you know you might start with that and then that distorts the whole it's, training it distorts the whole training so you might do a great training but yes. that part that part has... yes wow it might pull you about so you have to be culturally and politically sensitive wow yeah so um, it is good to learn the culture of people before you know um, get to know them to understand, you know, yeah. what, 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 what you know, um, and that we have uh, some communities where you cannot talk matters about sex to the older people oh. uh, if you're a younger person. Oh, so oh if you're a younger person, yeah, you're if you're a younger okay. person, you cannot talk matters sex to the older people. 
So if I, you know, your training is geared to what seems to do with sex and sexuality. Yes. So again, you have to be very, very sensitive yes. on how to package that information. Yeah. Um, for the young people, you have to go down to their level. Even your dressing room. Yes. And you cannot put on a suit when I'm training mm-hmm. the young people, <laughs> when you know, they're casually dressed. Yeah. So again, you have to you know, put yourself in there. You know, to speak their language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Times to bring in some shade. Yes. Yes. Uh, learn a few, you know, modern uh, Shen, Shen lyrics. Put them into your training. And it's going to be awesome. Um, mm-hmm. So all this starts from uh, the needs assessment, learning the culture of people, packaging um, the training according to, you know, the, the objective of the training, the expectations of uh, the the individual, what you want to meet, the goal that you want to meet at the end yes. of the day. Yes. Yeah, that will inform. You might be having content. Like, for instance, we want to train people on reproductive health. We know the contents <laughs> of reproductive health. Family yes. planning is there, you yes. know. But uh, maybe for young people, we'll, we may not talk about family planning. Yes. We might try uh, you know, repackage it and say we want to train young people on contraceptive method mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because young people have not started to plan their families because they don't have a family. But, <laughs> but for, the, for the older people, yes. now we'll talk about uh, family planning because yeah. now they have family. Yes. You understand? I understand. So it's the same thing, but now you just tweak it uh, to respond to that, uh, you know, uh, population. And uh, yeah. So um, a lot of things have moved online. Has that affected? Because Look, from my perspective, like from my point of view, mm-hmm. a lot of people who do capacity building uh, do it in-house. Mm-hmm. You're physically there, you're doing, you're doing, you know, you're doing team building mm-hmm. with people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, over the past years, a lot of things have changed in terms of a lot of meetings are happening virtually. Mm-hmm. Now, is, you know, is that still effective? Um, you know, we have to move with the changing world and technology has taken over most of the things. But uh, there are specific things that our technology will not take away from us. Like oh, for really? instance, yeah. Like for instance, uh, uh, Junaid, uh, we are social beings. <laughs> okay. We yes. are social beings. Yes. Uh, um, one of my masters, I was doing it online, but uh, many a times, you know, like once every month, I would want to meet my my lecturer, mm-hmm. we have the one on one, because there is uh, some uh, effect that uh, the lecturer would have, you know, over me yes. when I, you know, they're talking to me directly. Yes. So as we embrace technology, you know, and the digital world and moving with the digital world, there are quite a number of things that are perhaps we will just want to do it manually. Mundo yeah. mundo. <laughs> the way we do it. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, because uh, for instance, uh, much of uh, the programs that we are doing are going back to the community. Yes. And in the community, you will find uh, um, we have uh, the older generation who may not, you know, um, embrace the modern technology. Mm-hmm. You want to do a Zoom training with them and they will be on the camera and they're like, hey, <laughs> <off your way." laughs> So they will be concentrating with the camera <laughs> yes. and not the content that is coming from the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and at times, like for instance, go to some of the villages. Go to one of my villages. I have several villages. Yeah. There is a village where I was born and there is a village where I grew up. And there is a village where I want to, you know, to retire. So those are some of the villages, mm-hmm. isn't it? <laughs> I want to try it. Okay, three places. <laughs> yes. So um, you go to the villages. Yes, there is TV, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone is watching TV. But uh, one old folk would ask you, and uh, what are they saying? Na ruto ruto ame say manini. Eh? Alikuwa na tupi wa mawe. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> and they're all watching. Uh, uh, yeah, we were all watching. Okay. So again, you have to explain, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, Ruto, alikuwa maenda kidurai. Eh, uko kwenye alikuwa ilikuwa ni kidurai na alitupiwa ma. Oh, alitupiwa ma. Kwa nini? And yet, all of you were mm. glued on the same TV. Oh, okay. So what does that communicate? That we have people who perhaps learn well 
by you explaining something to them. Oh. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, wow. and, and again, people like participating. They say, um, I hear, I forget. I see, I remember. But when I do it, I understand. So much wow. of the training... Let me say that again. I hear, I forget. I, forget. I see, I remember. I remember. But when I, I do, do it, it, I understand. Wow. Okay. Yes. The people will learn like that. Okay. Yes. So many people would learn by doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They will learn by doing. Mm. Uh, for instance, let, let's just pick up on uh, you know fresh university graduates. Someone has gone to school, spent like four years in university, mm-hmm. and uh, perhaps they did not get an opportunity to go for internship or uh, incredit attachment. Yeah. But uh, we get uh, you know someone who has done uh, same course or rather a course similar to that at a diploma level, but this person had industrial attachment. Uh, you would prefer to hire this person who went for industrial attachment mm-hmm. with their diploma yes. as compared to this person with a degree. Considering this person has some sort of hands-on experience, mm-hmm. they yeah. understand how to do things, considering yeah. you know they were taught by doing, as compared to this person who was taught maybe online by just sitting and listening. <laughs> yes. The, the yes. Guidance, yeah. So um, most community members would want to be involved. They have wealth of knowledge, they will have wealth of experience, they will have wealth of information. Yes. But what you may want to do as a facilitator, as a community facilitator, <clears throat> you don't go to the community as an expert. Yes. You go to the community as one of their own. So that you tap on the resources that are within there and you package it and send it back to them. And yeah. they will understand. And uh, <laughs> you will be their darling. <laughs> I get it. Yes. Now, yes. there are other times, there are other times, uh, uh, let me just go back to now as a, you know, uh, I want to be a community. You know, there are other times where, you know, a company or a community or who, somebody has been trained, mm. you know, mm. and they've been trained twice, three or four times. Mm. And there's no change, mm. you know. There's there's literally no change happening there. Mm. So could this be that, you know, the person who came to train them is not doing a good job, or just the the community itself is not listening to what they were being told, mm. or you know, what's that all about? Because sometimes you know, a company would say, "But well, we trained you three or four times mm. <laughs> in, in a couple of months, but there's no, there's no, we're not seeing any changes mm. in our operation." So. You know what are the uh, what are the factors that sometimes contribute to that happening? Mm. I'll, I'll look at it from different uh, perspectives, yes. Uh, John. Yes. One, as a, as a company, you hire experts to tell you what to do. Ah. You hire experts to tell you what to do. Okay. Yes. You hire personnel to tell you what to do, not for you to tell them what to do, because this is not a school. <laughs> Just say that again, just so that guys can actually get that. <laughs> yes. Yes, like you, you are hired to tell us what to do, to tell the management oh, what to do. What to do? Oh, I get it now. If they had the capacity, they wouldn't have hired you. Okay. Wow. Wow, that's great. That's, yes. That so, is a new, that's new for me. So you are hired to tell the management or uh, the persons who have hired you, mm-hmm. you tell them what to do. You don't expect them to tell you what you are supposed to be doing because this is not a school. Mm-hmm. It's only a school where you are told you will need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And here, yes. it's uh, the other way around. You need to tell the management or rather those people who have hired you what yes. to do. Yes. Because you are an expert in that field. They are not experts in that field. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, for you not to perform, then uh, there must be something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. So you need to do some, something known as introspection. Introspection okay. yes. is uh, what we call in Kiswahili, kujita <laughs> mkutano. What, let me just say this before you go. 
I associate that with you time kutana na watu. You want to rehabilitate yourself. <laughs> Something is happening in the kitchen. Yes, intro introspection. Introspection. Yes. So with the introspection, we call it to the me, myself and I. Mm-hmm. Yeah? <laughs> me, myself and I. Yes. Me I'll chair the meeting. And I will participate. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And myself will be part of the meeting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you why? ask yourself, you need to ask yourself several mm-hmm. questions. Why am not, why am I not, you know, performing to the part, to the required, you know? So that is one. Yes. So what am I saying? Um, it could be an issue to do with that individual. Maybe they are lacking motivation. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is not something you were hired as an IT expert. Yes. But you have been sent to finance. So you are looking at the ledger books in the yes. books of accounts <laughs> and you are like, uh, Mama Mia, what the hell is this? Yes. So you are not doing something that you are, you know, that interests you. Yeah. So definitely, um, redundancy, that's how redundancy starts. Okay. Yeah. Because you have been put in a field that uh, doesn't suit you. You don't try. You don't feel self-motivated. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if uh, you are taking to as many trainings as possible, but uh, your attitude towards it, you lack motivation. Um, it's not it's not something that uh, you know excites you. Um, you will not perform. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two, we we'll yes. look at it from uh, the service, uh, you know, from the management point of view. Um, you are always being threatened. Always being threatened. And uh, there is no time someone has told you you're doing a great job. Every other time, no, you have failed. No, you have failed. You ought to have done it this way. You ought to have done it this way. You ought to have done it this way. You're yeah, like, okay. Yeah. I thought I was hired as an expert to tell you what to do. Yes. Yeah, so uh, there is lack of motivation. There is lack of uh, support. There is no resources. And uh, no one appreciates what you are doing. Uh, definitely, mm-hmm. and you will start asking yourself if you are in the right place, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and that's that's uh, you know one of the things that um, um, again contributes to high staff turnover. Oh, yeah, because that uh, you know yeah. they are lacking that kind of uh, support. Support because okay. for you to support me meet my delivery goals, I need to give you an enabling environment. But if I, I'm not giving you an enabling environment mm-hmm. and every other time I'm focusing on your on your failures, I'm, I'm focusing on mm. the negativities, I'm mm-hmm. focusing on the challenges, yes. and not that one thing. It's like, you know, um, can, I, can, I, can I just, you are, yes. Your yes. Give me a, a new page. Just a give me page. a new page. New page. New, new, very new. Very new. Yes. 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 I wish I could be there. Here, give me the pen. Yes. So now I'll ask you, Jinai, what are you saying? I'm seeing a dot. You see? I'm seeing a dot. Yes. I know that's actually what many people see in management. They see a dot. They see that dot. Look, the dot is very, very small. <laughs> the dot is very, very small. Can but you see did, that? Yeah, yeah, but John saw the dot. He did not see the big the <laughs> white <laughs> surface. <laughs> And that's, that, <laughs> that is so accurate. Yeah, yeah that, I did not see the I, did actually, not I didn't see the page. Yes. I, I just saw the the dot. And actually that is what many people focus on. The dot are you know, you came in late just one day. Or uh, you know, uh there was a system failure because of uh, you know, maybe poor connection somewhere, just mm. one day. Mm. And the people will focus on that. And not focusing on all these beautiful and excellent things you have done over years. Wow, yeah. So, however much we will take you to trainings yes. on how to avoid system failures, yes. you will be like, uh, ah, the same stuff. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Number three. Yes. Now, how to resolve this is uh, to involve everyone. We call it nothing for us without us. 
nothing for us without without us yes wow okay so nothing for us without us means that we involve everyone in the entire project cycle in the entire cycle mm-hmm. involve people in planning they will own it involve them in the implementation mm-hmm. they will uh, own it involve them in uh, the monitoring and evaluation and going back to planning oh you will try give them an enabling environment yes but don't forget to supervise them okay yes okay just say a little bit more about that i, I so <laughs> you just say that you know uh, um they should look at the whole page you know, look at the whole page yes. not just the dot not just the dot so when you bring in supervision here mm-hmm. well, you obviously not referring to the dot i'm i'm, I'm assuming yes, you yes. Know, you're referring to the whole page yes. but you know but what are you what are you referring to like what are you uh, don't don't um don't um, um <coughs> confuse supervision to you know uh, what we used to call in kiswahili unyapara <laughs> No nyapara. I know nyapara. Yeah. You know, oh, like, like so managing with a stick. Yes, with a or, stick. Yes. yes. Or what we call again, uh, mbua. You know, mbua. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes. Mbua means managing by walking around. Eh? You are always around and they're looking a fault finding. Oh, mm-hmm. fault finding. Yeah, mbua. Managing by walking around. Mbua. Man- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> I told you this guy is going to make me laugh. He's, he's, still, he's speaking about serious stuff, but you know, he's being it out really well. Yeah. So when you become Mbua, you're a manager by walking, you know, you're always walking around and, you know, trying to find, to fault find. Did you not come, uh, you know, early to work today? Mm-hmm. No. Um, what is he doing? Is he spending much of his time on uh, Facebook mm-hmm. and not, you know, you are, you are always looking for, for fault. That kind of supervision is long. It's no, oh, longer it's no longer there. The current kind of supervision yes. is where you're working with this person to support them meet their deliverables by giving them an enabling environment, looking at what they have done well and supporting them on areas that they need to improve. So you don't look at their weaknesses. You look yes. at the areas of improvement. Okay. So periodically, you discuss with this person, what are your deliverables for the week? I want to do one, two, three, four, five. How do you want to do it? These are the strategies I want to mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to engage. Yes. And uh, at the end of the week, uh, what will be the outputs? My output will be one, two, three, four. Okay. Mm-hmm. How would you want me to support you? This is the kind of support I want. Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. And then at the end of the week, call this person. Hey, Patrick, come sit down. Um, at the beginning of the week, you had set your goals. Yes. It's important to set goals than to set dreams because when you set goals yes. you work towards achieving those goals yes. you set up you know like a friend's strategies to enable you meet the goals but with the dreams you keep dreaming so um <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh okay yeah so yes. <laughs> so now yes <laughs> um, at the onset at the beginning of the week we yes. had a plan to do and, it, and uh, you know it is important mm. we use the word we Okay. We had a plan to do this. How far out? Yes, and uh, you know, I I did one, two, three, four, five. And I I you know, my intention was to get to six. However, I have a variance of one because of one, two, three, four, mm-hmm. five, mm-hmm. which I plan to carry forward to the following week. You have given them an opportunity. So if they are failing, the failure is on their side okay yeah but periodically just taking up on them yes yes so uh so in that moment clearly the employee is the one that has has something else like they have issues either, either they're not understanding what you're, what you're saying yes. or they're simply not taking instruction yes. they're not so it so you know so, so so at that point you know if they're not still performing then you might decide whatever you want to do right and that's where uh you know the periodic reviews is important because most managers would wait for you know at the end of the year to do a performance appraisal yeah and the job yes job. yes and the, and the performance appraisal is usually a bit routine 
Yes. <laughs> Especially when it comes, yes. it's coming at the age of at the end of the year. Yes. And you will not get the best mm. out of this uh, personnel. A good performance appraisal is a continuous, you know, a continuous process mm -hmm. where the staff will not know that you are appraising them. And appraising your staff does not necessarily mean you're focusing on their weaknesses. A good appraisal is where you're focusing on the strengths because that's, you know, that is what is the, that is the driving force. The weaknesses mm -hmm. are not a driving force. They're pulling you behind. Focus on the strengths. Hello? Focus on the strengths of this person. What are you good at? What is it that has been making you thrive? What is it that has been making me achieve this? Focus on that. Capitalize on that. However, address. Just address the areas of weakness. Wow. Okay. So how do you focus on the strength? In a week, <clears throat> this person was supposed to perform at 10, level 10. Yeah. But they performed at level three. So how do you fo focus on the on, on the on the on the on the on the achievements, on the success, and and, and not on the weakness? Mm -hmm. How did you manage to come from one to two? I did one, I did two, I did three. Now, if you added more efforts, will you be able to come to six? What is it that you will you will do to bring you to six? Now, look at the flip side of it. Yes. Now you're asking, why did you, you know, what made you not to come to 10? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I believe me, there will be all sorts of justification. Yes, yes. Here there is ownership. Yeah? There, there will be a lot of ownership and appreciation. Mm -hmm. And there will be value addition. But uh, on the other side, when you're focusing yes. on the failures, there will be a lot of uh, number one justification, the procrastination. It's not the problem. success of your staff is your success. The failure of your staff will contribute to your failure mm -hmm. because you want returns. Yes. Look, a lot of man hours have been lost because of this staff is, you know, man performing, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Every other time is spending much of your time uh, you know, trying to reprimand this staff, warning mm -hmm. letters, blah, blah, blah. You get a success. Try and, uh, you know, turn around things. Ask the staff who is in the fit that they to motivate you. Mm -hmm. many, many a times people would focus on money, but money will never be enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah? yes. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, focus them, yes. remove the money aspect. Yeah, just remove the money aspect and ask them what is it that you can do to motivate you. Yeah. Don't tell them. Yes. Let it come from you so yeah. that there is some sort of ownership. Wow, okay. That's part of capacity building. It is, but, but okay. And now, once in a while, all right, you can do it twice in a year. Have a 360 degrees appraisal. Where a 360 degrees appraisal, at times, you know, um, I find out from your staff um, what is it that I can do uh, to, you know, to improve. Uh, improve. Wow. What is it that That's I can rare, do? That's rare, though. It's so rare. From a lot of it managers. needs someone with a very high self-esteem. Because at times, staff might tell you things that you <laughs> do not bring down your self-esteem. But yes. as a manager, you need to start building your self-esteem such that uh, when this staff, you know, they give you, an, you know, they, they give you direct feedback. Yes. It doesn't bring you down. Yes. But uh, it motivates you to continue from Yes, yes, and, 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 and you know, Patrick, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, and I'm just uh, as we conclude, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, employees usually 
really don't ask the question, you know, what can I provide to this company? Usually it's what can I what am I gonna get yes. out of this? Yes. You know, and, and I think sometimes that really um uh it, it it creates something else for that employee that hasn't not performed as they would have wanted. And so you know, that's really great that you're you're bringing in the managers asking, you know, what is it can I can prove them to mm. have <laughs> mm. mm. And uh, what you're talking about is very, very uh, important because that's where fraud comes in, you know, cheating comes in. Uh, because uh, the staff feel like they are not part and parcel of the company. Mm-hmm. Because maybe there is a lot of uh, fear, intimidation. Yeah. And um, at times, we, we, when we are building the capacity of staff, we make staff feel like uh, they own shares in the company. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, you know when a staff are working away from the office, it is not really mandatory that they have to come to the office. Um, what you are looking at is the output. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing is that we don't you know run after the staff or perhaps you know, like get cut. Yes. Because we have <laughs> some staff who will put in more man hours when they are away. Maybe mm-hmm. this, uh, this person yeah. came here at mm-hmm. night, but you want to reprimand them and give them a warning letter. Yet you forget that this person was working late during oh, a certain yeah, report. Certain, certain report yes. yeah. So um, it's it's important to build the capacity of staff, always motivate them to feel like uh, this is where they belong. This is their other way. Yeah. And the small, small things, just the small, small thing, they make their staff feel at home. Yes. When you're getting some sort of, like, you know, Profits. How do you get a certain fraction of the profits you need to come back to the you know to the company? Leave alone, you know, um, um, salary. But a small, small thing. You won't be uh, taking coffee. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. I do. Uh, such small things. You know, there is a provision of coffee. Of coffee. <laughs> and on the flip side, for the staff, for the staff. What do they need to look at? This is where I do. This is my goal. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, if I take away, you know, this pen, yes. I take it away from the office and I'm taking it to my son, then uh, <laughs> tomorrow, what will I use? Okay. It's like you're taking your cup from, like, you know, from your house, taking it away. And then tomorrow you want to use it to get free. Wow. So treat your workplace like your other home. This is where you belong. This is where you spend much of your man hours. Don't go stepping on the on the, on the you know on the toilet seat because there is someone else who is coming to clean. In your house you clean it yourself. Wow. Don't That's leave your office untidy and unkempt because there is a, a cleaner. And yet, in your bedroom, you leave it very, very clean. This is your other home. So, if you are treating this as your other home, this is you know, where I belong. Then uh, issues to do with the fraud, because uh, if you steal from your employer, mm-hmm. it's, still, it's like you are stealing from yourself. Oh, now, yes. yes. It's still, uh, like you are stealing from yourself, because uh, you cannot steal from your own house. No. So if this is where you're getting your livelihood, yes. treat this like your own. Feel like you own this. I get it. So everyone, <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna do with this information that we just we just had with, with the amazing Patrick. Um, you know, but to the to the to the to the to the empl- to the employees, treat that organization as your own home. It, that's a, that's very rare because usually you know we equate that with something else, and I, I might I might be getting a lot of money for me to treat it as my home. So regardless of what you're earning, and it's not about the salary, it's your home, you know. And and when, when you know when that happens, that's gonna provide you with a space to really perform mm-hmm. in that organization. And and you know yes. But I have internal motivation. Yeah, many a times we are looking for other people to motivate us. Start yes. Most, start by motivating <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because uh, if uh, your workplace is so stressful, then it's not the right place for you to work. Mm-hmm. Leave. 
Leave. Yes. <laughs> if uh, your workplace is not motivating you enough, you're not motivated. You get so stressed waking up. I wake up at, uh, at five. I, yes. I told you I don't take breakfast. Yeah, you did, at yes. All. Where you do did. I take my breakfast? You take it at the office. Yes, I told you how you many meals one meal. <laughs> at home, isn't it? But That's I take two meals, meals <laughs> in the office. So it starts yes. with you. Yes. Have that uh, inner or self motivation. Mm-hmm. Get motivated. That you are only moving. It's like you're moving from your bedroom yes. to your living room, isn't it? Yes. There is that motivation that brings you to the living room. Yes. And there is a motivation that uh, li- uh, makes you leave your living room to the bedroom, isn't it? So perhaps treat your own house like a bedroom, but your workplace like a living room. Yes. But there is something that is motivating you to come to the living room. We spend much of our time in the living room as mm-hmm. compared to the bedroom. Yes. It's only sleep that takes us to the bedroom, isn't uh, it? Yes. So treat our own homes, our houses, mm-hmm. like a bedroom. But our wow. offices, let's yes. treat it like a living room. Wow. Let's spend much of our time in the yeah. living room. Yeah. It's in the living room that we make friends. It's in the living room that, uh, you know, we did stories. Yes. It's in the living room that uh, at times you do good plans, you make good plans. But that is a workplace. We make friends in the workplace. We do marvelous things in the workplace. Yeah. We even plan for our salaries and then, you know, we <laughs> have to spend our money in the workplace. In the workplace, yes. Yeah, so when you have that uh, internal motivation, um, you will go far. Do not have friction with your supervisors. It's in totality. In totality of yes. capacity building. Yes. Okay. Because a part of capacity building yes. is having the internal motivation. You are building your own capacity. Oh, okay. Wow, I, I didn't know that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm so honored and privileged that, you know, I'm building my own capacity. It's internal. It's internal. It's internal. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Look, if you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of content where we, we just talk, you know, we're just hanging out and sharing valuable information. If you like this kind of thing, just let me know in the comments below. We'll bring Patrick again next time to speak about something else. But for now, thank you. And I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you, Patrick. (laughs) You're so cool. We laugh, we joke, we sing. What a beautiful day. Not a cloud in our sight.